We are committed to separating facts from fear, and one way we're doing that is answering your questions about the coronavirus with experts. You can text your questions right now to 865-637-1010. We'll do our best to answer as many as we can right now on the air. Joining us from a safe distance, six feet or so, Dr. Michael Green from Trinity Medical Associates, an internist, also works with pediatrics. Doctor, thank you very much. One week ago, one of your colleagues was, was here, and what big changes have we seen in the last week? Let's kick it off with that. Well, obviously, we're seeing numbers go up, and I know you've had other people talking about this. Over the last week, the numbers in the U.S. keep going up. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the biggest thing. Uh, obviously, you know this as well. Italy, the numbers of deaths in Italy are just tremendous. We think about this as a wave that we can see in the distance, but we don't know how bad it's going to be. Is that a fair uh, analogy? That's a great analogy. And, and again, you've heard this before, but we can't test right now the way we would like to. If you come into my office, I can do a flu test on you and give you some assurance whether you have the flu or strep or something like that. But right now we can't do that. So we're kind of flying blind. All right, well, again, we want to get to those questions. You can text mm -hmm. us right now, 865-637-1010. We're going to answer as many as possible. Let's pop up the first one. Is it possible to get the coronavirus more than once? That's a great question. So there are some viruses you get once probably in your life, like chickenpox, and never get them again. But some you can get again and again, like a common cold or the flu. Because this is new, we honestly don't know. Everybody's guessing. That is still in the unknown category right now. Correct. Next question we can pop up. If you think you have been exposed to COVID-19, how long should you self-quarantine? Right, again, this is a really good guess, but right now, 14 days. And again, we're moving through some questions that have already been asked mm -hmm. really throughout the week, but these are important to reemphasize because they're coming to us again and again. I have COVID-19 question. Can someone be spreading the virus if they've been exposed, however, not yet exhibiting symptoms? Well, that's a great question. And honestly, the answer is yes. We don't know exactly how long. There are people who think that the virus was in Italy for weeks or even months before it kind of burst forth. All right, next question. And one of the real important things that we're doing now is social distancing. Mm -hmm. That's to mitigate that. For children who live in neighborhoods, do parents and caregivers need to tell them not to play with their friends next door? This breaks my heart. Yeah. <laughs> this was us yesterday. We were all outside, mm -hmm. everybody playing. I think if you're outside and can maintain those normal distances that you would, that's fine. I think if everybody shows up at the park and clusters together, you're defeating the whole purpose. Absolutely. We're going to move on to this question. Can certain foods help protect me from COVID-19? Uh, again, not known, but probably not. There's, there's not a food that I can tell you that would keep you from getting the flu or something like that either. On the food question, how does COVID-19 impact takeout? We're hearing go through the drive through That's but people still question. have concerns about that. Again, the same rules apply at preparation of food for COVID as it would for any other infectious disease. If the person there is infected, then you could get it. If the person's using good hand sanitation and not ill, then takeout's a great option. All right, we're gonna move to more questions. Is it important to wash sheets and towels more often? That's a great question. More often than who? My college <laughs> yeah. son? Exactly. Yes, a lot more often than that. Uh, there's, there's, there's no indication that, that it's on sheets and stuff, but if somebody was infected, then obviously you're gonna wash the sheets and going through the wash and the dryer. The dryer, because of the heat, is gonna kill just about any kind of virus. Uh, should I avoid putting on makeup because the process involves touching my face? Is that you or? Uh, that uh, would be from, me. I'm a part of that question asker. <laughs> yes, uh, no, you can put makeup on. Again, if you're washing your hands, then using your makeup, put your makeup on and then wash your hands, you're not gonna bring what was on you, your nose or your eyes to somebody else. It's all about the hand washing. Couple more minutes left. How safe is handling our daily mail? Should it be left out in the air for a certain number of hours? That's a great question too. Uh, Honestly, there's no indication that it's on things like the mail mm -hmm. and it is outside before you get it. So I, I think it, that would be fun. OK. Should places like our gorgeous national parks like the Smokies be avoided? No, absolutely. A day like today, that was one of the best things you could possibly do. Exercise, get outside, get some vitamin D, get plenty of sleep. Those are the kinds of things that are going to make you less likely to catch anything, include 
coronavirus. And, and as you mentioned, though, just keep that six foot distance or, or about that, even when you're mm -hmm. outside. Should I be scared of COVID-19 like it's going to end the world? Do you think it will be over soon and everything will be back to normal? <laughs> this is a reassurance question, doctor. It is. It's so scary. I, I think people really do start thinking that this is the end of the world. This I, I can't predict what the end of the world is going to be, but I don't think it's this. You can already see the numbers start to shift, start to go down, kind of plane off in the countries that have gone before us, like China and South Korea. We will get through this. We'll have a vaccine eventually. We'll have medications that help. This is not the end of the world. It's just going to be uncomfortable for a while. Absolutely. Can the COVID-19 affect animals? We haven't seen that yet, so I think our dogs are safe. Doctor, I asked your, your colleague last week, um, any other reassurances that you could have? You all work in the medical field. Mm -hmm. We so appreciate you being on the front lines of this fight. We wanna protect you as much as we can and protect ourselves, but mentally, can you, you speak to that a little bit, what you're telling your kids and your family? Absolutely. Um, you know, you say facts over, over fear, and I, honestly, I even say faith over fear too, because I mean, when you think about the end of the world, you do think who's in charge. And so I think thinking about things like that helped me a lot. Dr. Green, we appreciate your perspective and your expertise. Yeah. Shaking hands from afar, my friend. You can still keep those questions coming, 865-637-1010. Again, we'll continue to do this and answer as many as possible. You can also submit them at WBIR.com.